Interventions with a King. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack, Cardiovascular Interventions. Hi, I'm Dr. Skip Anderson from the University of Texas in Houston and Jack Interventions. And I'm here today interviewing Dr. Daniel Steinberg from the Medical University of South Carolina on his research paper, The Long-Term Impact of Routinely Detected Early and Late Incomplete Stent Apposition and Integrated IVUS Analysis of Several of the Taxis Trials. Welcome, Dr. Steinberg. Thanks for having me. Um, could you explain to us today why you undertook this analysis and what was your underlying question? We undertook the analysis to answer the question of whether or not incomplete stent acquisition actually matters. It's a matter of controversy as seen in a number of retrospective studies where incomplete acquisition has been implicated in adverse outcomes including restenosis and thrombosis. Prospectively, we haven't seen that. So the taxa studies represent a unique opportunity to do that in as much as there were predefined IVA subsets within the randomized trial which gave us both um, initial and follow-up IVA studies and then clinical follow-up after that. Okay, so you used uh, uh, several IVA subgroups from a number of trials. And how large was this group that you studied ultimately? Ultimately, there were about 1,500 patients that were eligible. And then obviously, you know, some studies were excluded throughout, either with they were unable to be read or um, paired studies were not quite available. The interesting portion of it, though, is this was a pre-specified IVA subset. So at the outset of the initial study, when the first procedure was done, there was also nine-month IVUS follow-up. I see. So you had baseline and nine-month follow-up IVUS exams on over 1,000 patients. Yes. I see. And then clinical follow-up beyond that. Yeah, for two years after. I see. So two years of clinical follow-up beyond that. Well, what did you learn from this IVUS analysis uh, from this very large uh, set of patients? We learned from this that routinely detected incomplete apposition, whether early or late acquired, does not appear to impact clinical events. I see. So when you say routinely detected, that means outside of any sort of uh, other issues going on, any other uh, adverse events? Exactly. Previous studies that have looked at it end up doing case control ma matches for patients that have an event and then patients who don't have the event looking for differences within IVUS parameters. This was routine. There was no other reason to do the IVUS other than the fact that they were in the study. I see. So early acquired uh, stent malapposition was not associated with any adverse sequelae over two years. Right. Either early at the time of the initial stent impl implantation or late acquired, which was not present at the time of the initial procedure, but present on nine-month follow-up. All right, presumably due to some sort of uh, uh, enlargement of the artery during the nine-month uh, course after first treatment. Right. The perceived mechanism is increase in positive remodeling without necessarily an increase in the plaque burden behind the stent struts. I see. And so in, in this large group of patients, uh, approximately what percentage overall had incomplete stent apposition, either early or late? Well, there was about 7% across the board of patients early. And then late, late malapposition was approximately 5 to 7%, depending on the stent that was used. I see. And so, and then over two years of follow-up, no adverse events. Yes. I see. Do you think that these data are going to change any clinical practices in the approach toward identifying or, or uh, treating differently uh, stent malapposition? I think it's important to recognize that intravascular ultrasound helps optimize stent implantation. And early incomplete apposition is often a marker of poor stent deployment technique. It is correctable in a number of cases, but the degree to which we try and correct it may or may not be beneficial for the patient. Um, what I do see from this is that a small amount of incomplete apposition, whether it's a long segment of disease where there's a small aneurysmal segment or calcification, small areas of incomplete apposition probably do not portend a poor outcome. Obviously, if the entire stent is not opposed on either the proximal or distal edge, I think efforts to optimize that are still reasonable. I see. So optimizing stent opposition, apposition is still desirable, but if small amounts of malapposition are noted, uh, you don't have to be overly concerned? Right. And then importantly, also on late studies, the concept of late incomplete apposition, if it's seen on an IVA study for another reason in the same vessel over time, uh, further efforts to optimize that may or may not be 
important. We don't know that for sure. We do know, however, that it does not appear to uh, imply a bad outcome down the road or increase in stent thrombosis, which is what we're all worried about. I see. Okay. Well, thank you, Dr. Steinberg, for this very interesting uh, study. Thanks. I'm Dr. Skip Anderson from the University of Texas in Houston and Jack Interventions. Thank you for joining us today.